Hello everyone. Today's video is going to be for those that have purchased the Virgin 3 Vapor Blast gun. There's been a few questions on how to orient it for printing. So that's what this video is going to cover. The first thing that you want to do is go ahead and uh, find the location of the file that you purchased from the Shopify store. double click it and it's going to open up in your slicer program probably not facing the correct direction I'm gonna walk you through what you need to do to get it oriented properly and what settings I use to print it once the files loaded in the slicer what you're gonna notice is that it's probably facing the wrong direction and what you want to do to correct this is Click on the uh, body of the Vapor Blast gun, and we're going to rotate it facing up. So you want nozzle facing up, and you want to make sure that the bottom is uh, flat on your build plate. If, if you mess around with this up and down, uh, or, or have it crooked to one side like, like so, uh, it's, it's not going to print properly. So you want to make sure that it's flat. And then what I like to do is I like to grab this, I pull it above the build plate and just let it go. And it's going to drop it flat. And if you notice, it's doing all the little slicing stuff down here. Wait for that to finish and then I'm going to show you the settings that I use. To get successful prints every time. The material you want to print this with is PETG. This material is more heat resistant than standard PLA. If you are going to expose this to any type of um, high temperature sun or even the uh, heat in a, in a garage could distort standard PLA. So I recommend highly that you purchase some PETG. I get mine from Amazon. It's the Amazon Basic brand and it works perfectly well for me. Uh, another thing that you want to make sure that you adjust is your temperature for your filament. There are uh, lots of YouTube videos out there that will tell you how to set your temperature properly because what you don't want is excessive stringing while your print nozzle is moving between parts of the print because that stringing will just wind up being inside of the vapor blast nozzle so for me using the Amazon Basics PETG I have found that the temperature that works best is 226 degrees so I use 226 degrees that gives me a good adhesion between layers without the filament oozing out of the print nozzle uh, I'm using a wham bam build plate magnetic uh, cover that goes over the the standard build plate and this is a flexible surface that can be pulled up and it it'll flex a little bit and that'll allow your model to pop off relatively easy if you are not using a uh, glass or uh, wham bam on your setup what I would recommend is to use some stick glue that you would buy at Walmart for art projects it's just a standard stick glue uh, it's water soluble and put some of that on the build plate surface if you're not using glass or you're not using a wham bam because PETG really likes to stick to that um, wrinkled plastic surface that most 3D printers come with and it may be difficult to get off it may or may not be you may want to just try 
uh, let the machine start printing and, and, and do a couple of layers and then stop it, go back and then see if you can peel the part off easily. If it tends to give you a hard time to peel off, I would suggest then to go ahead and use the stick glue. But if you got all that stuff sorted out and you already are familiar with your printer and all its little quirks and everything, then you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Just make sure the temperature is right, build plate temperature is right. And I use a skirt for build plate adhesion. I don't bother with uh, any kind of supports or anything like that. And the skirt simply just clears out the nozzle prior to starting the main print. I set my ink fill at 20%. I use ink fill pattern is gyroid. And uh, another thing that I also adjust is the wall line count. For this, I use eight. And what that does is gives me eight lines of uh, wall thickness, which is something that you're going to want when you're running abrasive media through this uh, vapor blast gun. Now, I've been using mine for about uh, six weeks, running very aggressive media through it, 36 uh, grit garnet, 80 grit garnet, glass bead media, and I haven't had any problems with it looking like it's wearing any of the internal components. What will wear are the nozzles. And, uh, again, with the nozzles, the beauty of the nozzles and having them 3D printed is once they wear out, you just 3D print yourself another one. I uh, ran 36 rig garnet in the vapor blast nozzle for three weeks straight without uh, any issue. And uh, it was during the fourth week that I started to notice that it, it, it had worn away about a millimeter of wall thickness all the way around which is important which is the reason why it's important to have the eight line uh, wall count and I'll show you here right now I have it set on preview mode so if you pull down if you're using Cura if you pull down your layer height on the right side I'll, I'll show you what that eight layer count does for you so I'm gonna zoom in here so you guys can see and if you notice, the bottom portion that touches the build plate, well, this is going to be the beginning of the threads for the garden hose attachment that's built into this vapor blast gun. And you notice that it's it's just it's going to be just solid plastic. And as you build up, so all of these layers are solid plastic, solid plastic, solid plastic. And then once you get to the first base layer, now you'll start to see after it's gone through eight layers of uh, of thickness. Now you start to see the gyroid pattern start to emerge, and you can go ahead and pull this up so you can see it growing. So now this is the uh, the the interior portions. and then it builds up into the. Uh, bore and then finishes up with the threads up top so I'm going to go ahead and get all the way to the top move this thing down so you can see it sorry about the jerky movement here it's kind of tricky to move this model around all right so there's our there's our vapor blast nozzle next thing you want to do is make sure that your build plate is clean uh, the wham bam what you have to do with it is use some steel wool and alcohol to make sure that you don't have any contaminants left over from a previous print. I do that after every print, and for me it's worked out really well. Uh, next thing you want to do is go ahead and click Save to Disk. After we get to that point, you'll have your file. You'll have to go ahead and put it on the SD card and transfer it over to your 3D printer. Or if you're using... Octolapse, you can use Octoprint for this. And uh, I use the Octoprint with the Octolapse so that I can capture these time lapse videos. And I'm starting to learn how to use this. They're not perfect by any means. I'm still uh, tweaking this thing. 
So I plan to film this. It's uh, going to be about a 12-hour print. It will take some time. But uh, go ahead and start your print. I'll go ahead and I'll upload the time lapse. That way you guys can see it. And I'll print out every component to the version 3 Vapor Blast nozzle. For you guys that have purchased it, you'll have all the settings that I use. And as I improve this product, uh, I'll update the file in the Shopify store. Those of you that have already purchased it will get an uh, automatic email telling you that, hey, there's an update to your file. You can just simply re-download it again. It's at no cost. That way, as I make improvements to the original one or add different orifice diameters, currently I'm going to print a 3 millimeter uh, orifice version, test it out, do that in the uh, Shopify file. That way, you guys that have already purchased it, if you're running on a smaller compressor, the smaller air jet diameter will help improve uh, efficiency with your compressor. So with that being said, let me go ahead and get this time lapse thing going. I've ranted on long enough. Next thing you're going to want to do is open up the STL file for the collar. I already have mine ready to go. And it's probably going to start off on its side like this. And we, we want to change this. We, it's not going to print properly like this. And all you need to do is just click on the part. Make sure that uh, rotation is selected. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it with the flat side uh, that has the small opening facing down. So we're just going to take this, rotate it, and then drop it. And then that, that will print uh, properly. You don't need any supports or anything like that. Print it just like you printed the version 3 Vapor Blast nozzle body. And it will turn out uh, perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start print. I'll do a time lapse on this. That way you guys can see it. And we'll finish up by printing one of the tips. Printing the tips is the same way. Once you load the file into your slicer program, just click on the image. Then uh, select the rotation tool. And then you want to stand it straight up, just like this. Make sure that you don't have any supports turned on. And uh, just simply print it. Guys, if you like the video content I'm putting out, make sure to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notification bells. That way you guys know when up and coming videos are put out. Comment and share. That helps me to... Continuing growing the channel and putting more of this content out there for you.